What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the crack a pack series today We are opening up uh, for what feels like the millionth time to be honest a pack of the 2015 core set It seems like we're getting this a lot lately. These are picked at random, but it's just kind of funny uh, This is uh, of course uh, the series where we look at things from a pack one pick one limited perspective So we're gonna do the best we can to go through and actually pick out what would be a good first round draft pick uh, from this set. So this is a core set. I do need to kind of stress that some of the cards are not going to be as high of a power level as we are normally going to see in other sets. And so for that reason, cards that might seem like bad picks may actually not be quite as bad uh, in this set. So we will go through every card though. Our first one here is Midnight Guard. It's a 2-3 for 2 and a white. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you untap Midnight Guard. I actually really like this card. Uh, it handles the early game pretty well. Uh, just because even if your opponent plays a creature, it untaps, which means it's going to be able to hopefully block it and block it effectively because it does have a big butt. Uh, and so for that reason, I actually like this. Uh, it's not necessarily a first pick, I wouldn't say, but it's not a bad card. Uh, Zoff Shade is a 2-2 two, two for 3 and a black. You can pay 2 and a black, and it gets plus 2, plus 2 until the end of the turn. Pretty much all shades have the, like, buff ability, which is really cool. But this is just a really inefficient one. Uh, so for four mana, you get a 2-2, two, two, which is real bad. Uh, and then if you want, you can pay three mana to give it plus two, plus two, and make it a 4-4. Four, four. So for seven mana, you can get a 4-4. Four, four. Seems great. Uh, now, it is worth noting you can pump more mana into this. You pump six into it, and it gets plus four, plus four. That's fine. But that's a lot of mana. Uh, this, this is just a really bad card, in my opinion. Uh, Charging Rhino is a 4-4 for 3 and 2 green. Uh, it can't be blocked by more than one creature, which means it's probably uh, pretty favorable in combat most of the time. I feel like this is a pretty decent card, uh, but not really my play style, to be honest. Uh, it's just a little bit stompy, which is fine. Uh, but a 4-4 four, four for 5, honestly, in a core set, is pretty okay. Uh, and that added ability just means that it's not going to be able to be double blocked, so it's going to be harder to actually get rid of. It's probably pretty good, uh, but I think I'd rather have the Midnight Guard. Uh, Will Forged Golem is a 4-4 for 6 of any color. Now this does have Convoke, so your creatures can help cast it. Uh, each creature you tap while casting the spell pays for 1 generic mana or 1 mana of that creature's color. Obviously, since it's colorless, it really doesn't matter. I uh, actually really like this card. Um, this is a flexible kind of card, uh, so something that can really stick you into any deck. It actually works well in a deck with stuff like Midnight Guard, uh, especially because you tap the Midnight Guard uh, to help convoke out this one. And then when it enters play, uh, the Midnight Guard actually just untaps, which is great. Uh, so I like that kind of synergy there. Um, I don't know which I would rather have more, probably the Midnight Guard, to be honest. Uh, but I'm actually going to keep both of them here for now, just in case. Uh, Chrono Stutter is an instant for five and a blue put target creature into its owner's library second from the top. Uh, so this is tempo at its best. So uh, being able to pick a creature, throw it into the, the player's deck, and then you know when it's coming. Uh, you also know that you're kind of fading a draw on their side uh, is pretty good. I don't know uh, that I like this better than the cards we already have. I don't think it's quite as powerful. Uh, I, it's a powerful ability, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, you still don't really know what the card on top of it is, which means you're still you're kind of a turn away from the fade Which is kind of weird. Uh, so I don't know that I like that all that much uh, Borderland Marauder is a 1-2 for 1 and a red when it attacks it gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is just a really good aggro card. Uh, it's an above average 2 drop for sure It's definitely one that I would want in a uh, red deck wins kind of style deck not that I like this over the other cards that we have so far, but it is quite good. Uh, Araska's Swift Claw is a 3-1 for 1 and a white. It's a vanilla creature. So uh, this is an interesting one. Um, it's good for a 2-drop, but it dies really, really quickly. Um, and so for that reason, I'm not like the biggest fan of it. But it's definitely like a pretty good 2-drop. I mean, 3 power for 2 mana is pretty good. Uh, I'd probably want it, uh, but not necessarily want more than like 1 or 2. Uh, it's just okay. I don't like it more than the creatures we've already got. <clears throat> uh, Encrust is 1 and 2 blue for an enchantment. Uh, it can en enchant artifacts or creatures, so not just creatures. Uh, but basically, the permanent does not untap during its controller's untap step, and its activated abilities can't be activated. 
Worth noting, this does not tap the creature or artifact right away. So uh, for that reason, it's not quite as good as some other cards that we've seen with this effect. Uh, but it is basically removal. I do like this card quite a lot. I'm not 100% if I like them more than the cards that we've already got, but I'm going to keep it here for now. Uh, Torch Fiend is a 2-1 for 1 in a red, and you can pay a red, sacrifice it to destroy target artifact. This is just a really good utility card. Uh, what's great about stuff like this is that for like a red deck wins, which is where this is probably going to be at its best, uh, if you find yourself up against a problematic artifact, you can take care of it. And because this is still a 2-1 for 2, you can play it main deck and not actually take up a slot for dedicated artifact hate. Uh, so I actually really like this card. Not over the cards that we've already got, but it is really, really solid. Our first uncommon is Leeching Sliver. I completely forgot there were slivers in this uh, set, but it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a black. Uh, and whenever a sliver you control attacks, the defending player loses 1 life. So before damage is even dealt, after you declare your attackers, the opponent will immediately lose a life for every sliver. That's pretty solid, uh, if I'm going to be honest. It's a little bit tricky to make the sliver deck work, though, just because you have to really start taking them early and then just completely go all in on it. Uh, and also fixing is a little bit tricky because you do obviously have to be in multiple colors for it. Uh, but this is really a powerhouse, kind of a payoff card for it for sure. You can get it down early and start dealing damage early, which means you're going to win earlier, uh, which is all great stuff. I don't think I would take it though, to be honest, just to be safe, uh, if nothing else. It's a definitely higher ceiling card than anything that we've got so far, but uh, you really need the sliver count to make these decks work. And so for that reason, it's a little bit shady. Uh, Reclamation Sage is a 2-1 for 2 and a green. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. Again, kind of built-in artifact and in this case enchantment hate uh, for a green deck. It's actually just pretty solid. It's a little underpowered obviously for 3 mana, but uh, because it can hit artifacts and enchantments, you're probably likely to find a target uh, and you can just kind of hold on to it because it's not going to impact the board hugely until it actually hits something. So. I like this card. It's not one that I would take over anything that we've already got, to be honest, but it's a pretty good card. Uh, Illusionary, Illusory Angel, excuse me, is a 4-4 four, four for two and a blue. It does have flying and you can only cast it if you've cast another spell this turn. This is a really good card. Uh, yes, it sucks that you have to place something else first, but that's pretty easy to do when this only costs three mana. Uh, even if you play this a little bit late game, it's still a 4-4 four, four flyer, so it kind of is okay. Uh, it's going to be able to close out a game. This is a good bomb uh, for a blue deck. Uh, so honestly, that definitely beats out anything that we've got so far, in my opinion. Uh, our rare here is Grind Clock. So it's an artifact for two of any color. You can tap it and put a charge counter on it. Uh, and then you can also tap it and target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard where X is the number of charge counters on Grind Clock. Uh, normally, I actually really like Mill. Uh, strategies in limited just because you have 40 cards makes it a lot easier uh, to actually finish the game that way but this is very very slow uh, unfortunately uh, and if you leave it around too long they know it's happening and so they know that they need to deal with it so they're gonna board in some artifact hate which most likely will be able to actually I mean most cards as we've seen there's some artifact hate in this set so uh, don't really like this card in limited I do think it's technically powerful but it's just way too much setup unfortunately uh, we do have a foil mountain and an island, so definitely for me, uh, it's a pretty easy illusory angel. Uh, I don't think there's really much competition for that slot. Uh, we did get some other like okay things, but I think the illusory angel is definitely the best. If you disagree, let me know in the comment section below, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.